Okay, this is, uh, what, what's the date? It's the 28th. Um, I added a new file on the Cyber Web, Cyber Club website. Everybody should have access to that now. And you all get my emails? Multiple today? Yes. Yes, I'll fix them. I sent a couple different classes. I put the new degree program up here. We talked about this last week. There's been a lot of changes since last week. And I actually found an issue today with the degree program that actually has been there for five years as no one's caught. Well, we caught it today. So I'm going to bring it up here so we can see. Why don't we turn this crap off again? <sighs> okay, how do we turn this off? Does anyone remember? Is it the arrow? Yeah, I have a copy. Okay. Seriously, we're Zoom now. They're Zoom. All right. We changed quite a bit. Um, all right. Now it's all on one sheet. Remember last week I showed you the forensics option and the cybersecurity option? Well, now those are all on one sheet. The cybersecurity option is only 12 credit hours in the option there, the digital forensics is 15 hours. But if you think about it, if you did the cybersecurity option, then when you did the forensics option, you only need 12 more because one of the classes is a duplicate. Someone mentioned last week when I just moved the class to the top. I was going to, but the whole top only requires a C. As and I if, I, and if I move forensics to the top, you could get through it with only a C, and that ain't happening. And then you put the stipulation except for CIT. I, that's too much work. Yeah, we, don't, we, don't want more we were going to do that. Okay. Um, we actually had a meeting Monday, and... Fundamentals is now required on there. You'll see that. And you'll see SSAC has been removed. It was on there last week. Um, so there's been a lot of work done on this. And I actually went over to the uh, academic VP's office today and found out that we actually didn't have enough gen ed electives in our degree. Because we had support and related, if you remember the degree sheet. And it said recommended was econ and all these. Not required, recommended. They thought it was required. So that's why it went through. So, so basically, what happens is I had to require one more gen ed. And at the bottom, we had the option of two hours of PE or personal finance. That's on every degree now. But technically, I don't need personal. I don't need two hours of PE, the hyper courses. So I can just put personal finance there. But then we're short one class, so then I put humanities there. The reason I did that was, how many of you plan on going for a four-year degree? You need humanities for a four-year degree. Positively need it. If you don't get it here, like, if you go to OSU, they're going to tell you, go to Rose, take humanities course. So there you go. Now you're getting it in your degree. So you need the course anyway. Might as well require it. It's cheaper here. So the problem is you need, if you look over to the right, what you can't see here, 63 to 66 hours there at the bottom. To graduate from Rose State, you have to have 62. It's our region's requirement. So technically, I couldn't take off one course anyway. So, I mean, if people say, well, I don't really want to take it. Means, well, if I took it off, well, then we're short a class. And then you have to pick up something else. So I might as well. Now, I don't know which humanities course. It's probably going to be humanities one or two. I, I'm trying to get hold of OSU this afternoon, but they weren't in. I'm going to verify exactly which ones would positively transfer to their degree. That way it helps you guys out even more. Okay? Good. Okay with that? What is <laughs> <laughs> a lot of humanities courses. There's art, which I hated. Um, I took humanities one. It's basically, it's kind of like, it's like a history course and an art course kind of combined. It's not really art or, yeah, it's, I had a wonderful teacher. She was great, and you know, I got an A in both of my courses. What? Yeah, exactly. Kind of like a sociology course. Um, they must be awesome because we got an entire building for humanities. So, now, there's a ton of them. I mean, there's. I clipped out of uh, Eastern European religions. By the way, those of you who are planning on getting an advanced degree, or actually any degree, I recommend taking CLEP courses. I clapped out of Eastern European religions. What I did is I went to the library, got a book on Eastern European religions. I read 
seven or eight of the chapter summaries, took test, passed it, done. I cut that on marketing. Do you know why they put the old milk in the front and the new milk in the back? So they drink it first. There you go. You got three credits in marketing. So I clipped out of marketing. I clipped out of like 20 something hours of classes. Well, that's good because the only time I'm going to pay it is when I'm just plastered. <laughs> so, but, uh, so yeah, after much discussion over there, say, Rose State got a new sports program, if you didn't know that. You got the soccer now and all this other stuff. So originally, I had asked years ago, could I remove the hyperclasses? Oh, no, can't do that because we need enrollment in hyperclasses. Well, now I can do it because actually the nursing program has already removed theirs and it got approved. So once somebody gets it approved, the rest of it can get it approved. Um, I don't know. I did all mine at base. We had a testing center. I'm assuming you should be able to do it at our testing center. Yeah, you have to schedule it and all this. I just went to start. See, in the military, I could clip every test one time for free. So I literally walk in, okay, what kind of test you got? I haven't taken yet. And they put it down there, and I go take it. And I passed lots of them. <laughs> I clipped statistics. I brought some friends. Nice, nice. Okay, but um, so that's why I added that. There's, in the long run, it's going to help you guys to have a humanities course in there. Not to make our degree better, but, you know, I was telling, I think I was telling you downstairs, a lot of people look at what's the best for Rose State. Sorry, I want to know what's the best for you guys. And if you all plan on going out for a degree, why don't I help you go on for a degree and get a cheaper class, something you required anyway. So we were going to add database theory in there to get another course. Then I got to thinking about it. I'm like, you know, they required humanities. Why not put humanities in there? And... Arlene's the only other one really on the committee that has any say in it, and she's fine with that, so we're good. So, this should go through. It'll actually go through, I think, the 21st or something of February. So, that's what it is. Fundamentals, okay. that was kind of a highly recommended, kind of required before. So, now it's a required. It's actually required for the CIT degree also. Yes? Quick question. Uh, for... Future AP exams, and uh, it won't pertain, slightly pertains to me, slightly doesn't. I, uh, in computer science, which is a programming course in mm -hmm. high school, fundamentals of computers and programming, that's all it that counts as. It doesn't get you out of, Script before Java, Java was, before, before intro to Java was acquired, yeah. this is, uh, computer science was an advanced Java course. Oh. Hmm. It didn't even get me out of that, it gets you out wow. of that. It barely, well. they said it barely gets you out of fundamentals. Well, there's, there's, there's some, I, I don't know the exact name, but there's a matrix we go by. This course at this school matches this course at this school, and this AP exam matches this course, and that is, we have say in it, but like this much say in it. You know, it's like every school in the state gets together with one representative from each school, and they have really fight over everything. Yes? No. We are offering the mobile and the reverse engineering in the fall. Those are the first two. Okay. I have to create them. So Sorry. And the good thing is, since we have new courses, I talk them into sending me to new training to get these certifications in these courses. Mm -hmm. So I literally am going in April 11th, and I'm going again in May 9th. Two different weeks of training. One in Dallas and one in... Dulles, Virginia. Let's put a Virginia. Oh, well. All right, so that's the change. I know last week we talked about it, but now you actually see what we've come up with. So, are we okay on that? Uh, again, I did post this in the D2L class under the content page under right there, proposed new cyber degrees. So you're welcome to look at this. Now, again, like I mentioned last week, don't go to Steve because this is not approved by anybody. Okay. And it could still change. But at least you got an idea. Yes? So I started this semester. So does this apply? Will the proposed changes affect my requirements? No. Your requirements will not change until you graduate. Unless you want them to change. So you can opt into the new? Oh, yeah. You can always opt into the new. You cannot opt into an old. You can always go into a newer degree program. 
But you can't say, I'd like to go into the 2009 cyber degree. You can't do that. Actually, you know, let me take that back. We did approve that for one student. He was a military student who literally was gone for multiple semesters, but he was deployed the entire time. And it was like had documentation so we could put him back in the old program. So, but yeah, great. Okay, so everybody knows where to find that. Okay. All right. Now, um, I literally spent the entire day on this. I made a presentation. And as going through this, I was finding all the issues. That's why I was doing all this paperwork. And I was literally over academic affairs for multiple hours today getting this crap worked out. Okay. All right. There, again, is the new degree program. Okay. So I, I put it in there. But um, all right. I, what I decided to do was I had quite a few people ask me, what are you teaching that course? Well, program fundamentals, these are all the courses required, the program requirements for the cyber degree. This is the actual syllabus. We, at school, we have a class syllabus and a course syllabus. Okay, The course syllabus is the official one for the college. Then we take that and make an individual class syllabus for each teacher teaching a class. But this is the actual write-up for it. A lot of these I'm found out are going to have to change. Looking over them today, there's a bunch of them we got to change. Uh, in this course, we are going to be focusing on beginning Python, not advanced Python. Basically, we got a new book. It's actually free. So you want to purchase it. It's we're going to cover all the way up to classes in Python, and we're going to cover obviously some pseudocode and flowchart, some some design aspects as well. That's what's going to be happening in the program of fundamentals course, starting next semester, like summer. Okay. Now, after that, we go into script programming. Script programming, again, this is the, the the course description, which will change. We're no longer covering all those languages in there. Now we cover, do I have another slide for that? Yeah, now we're going to be covering more advanced Python and JavaScript. And it actually brings up a very good question. Um, you know, this is what we were covering. So why do you think we're switching what we're covering? Any idea? That's what's current in the industry. We actually have an advisory committee, and I actually have met personally with some people at Devon multiple times, and they said, you know what? Go to Python. That's what we want. It's what we need. The reason JavaScript's in there is a lot of people need JavaScript as well because a lot of web pages have basic JavaScript in it. So we're going to focus mainly on Python but some JavaScript. I, I didn't haven't heard that. Nice. Okay, so so script programming is the second programming course that's required, and both of these changes are for all CIT degrees as well. The database, the programming, all that stuff. Oh, Windows script toast was probably on that list, but stuff like PowerShell, some of the newer stuff like that, Bash. Well, the problem is, you know, if you in the past, we actually had a script class that covered ASP, JavaScript, um, two other ones. Whatever they were. Well, we covered four of them. I can't even think what they are now. Uh, Perl, and one more. Um, uh, but the point was, if you take a 16-week class and cover four languages, how much do you cover of those four languages? Hello, world. <laughs> Maybe... Hi, I don't know, but not too much beyond that. So what we're trying to do is, you know, we want you to learn something and make it somewhat meaningful, but usable as well. So that's what's happening in those two classes. Okay. Networks uh, used to be called Introduction to Networks. Let's call it Networks now. We can change that a little bit. Um, really, no prerequisites for this course. There's the course description of there. Uh, most, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have already had the course. It's not a bad course. We actually use a CompTIA approved networking book. It prepares you for the Network Plus exam, and you can buy discount vouchers through Johnny Clark. Now, that being said, I worked on that today too. We are. It looks like we're going to be getting the vouchers here. I just have to do the work, the paperwork for it. What that means is you will be able to buy vouchers from us rather than Middell. 
The vouchers are currently about half price. Some of you bought the vouchers before, I'm assuming? Yes. One of you? Okay. I bought multiple vouchers from them, so it's kind of cool. Um, but what's even cooler than that is if we sell enough vouchers, which you guys would buy plenty, trust me, enough people go through Johnny to do it, faculty get vouchers for free, one a month. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> that awesome? But think about it. I mean, I already have A+, plus, Network+, plus, Security+, plus, Internet+, plus, so really there's not much I can use. But the fact is, we can take a new faculty member or someone who doesn't have them and get them for free. What's it take to be a faculty member? Uh, a lot. Okay. Uh, so, so we are looking to do that. Do we get to be a testing center for it? That's the next part. Okay. okay. Um, we wanted to become a testing center. Actually, years ago we wanted to become a testing center. But, you know, we had a testing center in the LRC. But we also did work keys testing at Workforce Development over in the P-Tech building. And it was kind of a fight. No, we want to do it here. No, we want to do it there. But the problem with the P-TECH building was, they're like, we will only schedule tests if we have a minimum of four people testing and it's at the same exact time. That was, like, worthless. So now the way testing is handled is different. In the past, you had to have a dedicated lab. That's all it did. Now that's all changed. Uh, we wanted to do it, but then our testing center left. Obviously, the LRC is a hole in the ground. And until, I mean, we literally got people all over this campus. Until that's finalized, we don't know what's going to happen. And Johnny Clark wants to do it, but he said the same thing I did. We're so swamped right now, it takes time and it takes effort and it takes someone to do all the paperwork. So what I told him today was he wants to do it and we still want to do it. Whichever one actually starts the process, we'll let the other one know so we don't get two in the same area. So we could theoretically get one here. It's not a big deal. What we would have to do was we would have to have obviously someone to proctor them. It can actually be done anywhere. But you know, so we're we're actively looking at. I mean, currently you can go to Metro Tech, you can go to Francis Tuttle, you can go to OKCCC, you go to many places to do it. But one thing you don't want to happen is you don't want that stuff to get compromised in any way. If it's compromised in any way, you're done. I'm just the word gets out that you're screwing something up, and then no, you're done. So. Um, Right. Does the discount apply just to the voucher? Just the voucher. Just the voucher. Just the voucher. But it's half price. So, and about that, we do have some cert testing software. It's outdated by like a lot. Not that that much. But put it this way. What now? It's online, yes. Virginia studied the outdated Security Plus and passed the Security Plus. So my point is, yeah, they changed it a little. They don't change it a lot. Okay. So just, just kind of sure. yeah, and then, right. And uh, talk to the guy with the hoodie. You can set you up on the count. See, I don't have to do it. Are there a limited <laughs> number of discount vouchers you can get? Oh, no. You can get as many as you want. And you can keep buying the same one over and over and over if you fail. Well, because I went through CompTIA and got their discount vouchers, and I was limited to two per six months. So I wasted my two on A plus. Oh, no, that's that's okay. no that's no longer that's not true. Okay, cool. No, no, it's not true. You can do the man you want. But I highly, they do expire. Buy it when you're ready to use it. Johnny takes a week, maybe two weeks to get them in sometimes. And that's it. But don't buy a whole bunch of them and put it off and then don't ever get them. So Yes. So there's his contact information. Everybody's always asking me for it. There it is. Email him, say, hey, I'd like to get a, a voucher for the Security Plus. He will say, okay, bring me a check for $143. I think that's $143. You give him a check, and then a week or two later, he gives you the voucher. He has you email it to you. And what happens is, instead of the SYS number, you get a JYS number or some. It's still the same test. So it's just a discounted test. Okay? Everybody okay on vouchers and how that works now? Okay. All right, our computer hardware course. This is the class that mainly Arlene teaches and also uh, 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 Brian Hampton teaches. That's the A-plus course. Okay. Really hasn't changed much. We just switch books, but, I mean, it's still the A-plus course. I'm assuming most of you have taken that course. Now, if you were to get these certifications prior to taking the course, you don't have to take the course. So, Yes. 
you can drop now and get all your money back. Okay. Yeah, you haven't. <laughs> drop by tomorrow. I've actually done half the coursework already. <laughs> yes, you can actually drop by tomorrow and get all your money back. Bring me your A. Now, let me, let me explain how this works. You bring me your A plus voucher. And as long as it's real, we'll submit some paperwork. And that could take a while to get into the system. But they, what happens is I do the paperwork, I give it to the dean, he signs it, it goes over to the registrar. And whenever they get around to putting them in, so it could take a semester, but they will get in there. And if it doesn't get in there, when you go to graduate and they say, you're missing this A-plus class, they say, I did the paper, then they go take it out of the file and they put it right down. I actually, James Finch, some of you know James Finch. I did a whole bunch for him. None of them got in the system. It fell between the seat cushions? Yeah. Well, no, they had them all. So when he went to apply for graduation, like, you missing this? And he's like, no. So they were like, oh, yeah, we have them over here. They just never put them in. So the point is, it might not show up on your transcript, but just know you're getting credit for it. Yes. So you're saying that this class here prepares you for the... A plus. A plus test. Correct. The A plus used to be the gold standard for Best Buy, Tinker, Dell, all that stuff. Okay? It used to be the entry-level certification to get in there. Okay? Um, again, it's for the A-plus exam. You can get this guns vouchers through Johnny Clark. Again, we hopefully soon that will change. It cost us nothing to do it. But the problem is i got 8,000 other things to do, yes. So it used to be the gold standard for Yep. Used to be. Used to be. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> used to be. He asked that. I was waiting. Okay. Now, you know, this actually, you know, someone asked me a question this week. Uh, I forget what certification they're asking me about. But uh, my answer was, you know, I have a Novell certification. Novell 311. Who's, who's used it before? Wow, really? One person has? Wow. Nobody has it anymore. But I actually got a job because of it. The uh, Oklahoma Tax Commission, one of our students worked there, and they needed someone that was certified to work on their server, so they paid me to do it, and I did it. So the point is, I, I like certifications. Just get them. You know, if they're if you never use it, well, did it really hurt anything? No. You gotta renew them. Now you have to renew them. Not really renew them. You just need CPEs. And the way CPEs work, if you get the 30 hours of CPEs, you can submit those same CPEs for every certification you have. So it's not like it's 30 for this one, and 30 for this one, and 30 for this one. Taking a class, you get CPEs for it. You're gonna get 40 CPEs for taking one class at Rose State College. There you go. You're done. Go to IWS. What did we get? Eight for that one, I think we got? Inotech. Yeah, Inotech. So there's all kinds of them. You get credits for everything. If you audit the course, because you can audit your course through some accredited websites, so you don't get you don't get actual credit, you don't get right. college credit, do you, would you still get I don't think so. Right, you'd, have to, you'd have to talk to them today. Yeah, I don't think so. But you also get credit for reading magazines. <laughs> you get credit for going to conferences. You get credit for all kinds of stuff. Um, any security magazine, security focus, um, just bu and the, most of them are free. When I was looking through the, when I was looking through the A plus departments, like yeah. they said, education makes up like a certain part. Not all that. It's magazines anyway. Yeah, well, unless there's just different. I don't know. I'm going by ISC squared, but uh, most of them are the same. And the funny thing is, you know, I go to these conferences and they always give me the voucher, you know, saying you were here. Mm -hmm. I've never had to supply one to anybody yet. I literally go to ISC Squared and say, I went to this conference on this day, hosted by this person, hit submit, approved, done. It's like, okay. I literally have never, ever provided proof for anything. I'm not telling you to cheat. <laughs> but I'm just saying they don't require proof. I'm just saying. Now, I do know that like a Tinker, like Virginia works at Tinker, she has to provide proof to the security officer on Tinker that she's getting them. And then she provides it to Contia. So it's... But CPEs are really easy. And the cool thing about it is if you get a job, that you got the job because you have the certification, and then there's a conference you want to go to, they kind of have to let you go. <laughs> they do, for the most part. Isn't that true? Yeah, yeah they always do. Exactly. Because, you know, if you lose a certification, like, oh, crap. So then they send me something. Then they get you out of the office. Yeah. So that's why this reverse engineering class I'm going to, I'm like, you know, we are teaching a class in the fall. Kind of got to get it. Like, okay, fine. <laughs> now we did budget for it and got approved on a grant, so I don't have to pay for it. So no, it's all paid for on a grant. That's the only reason I'm going. <laughs> no, no, it's out to school. Okay. 
So, so that's the A plus course. 2433, mobile device and wireless security. See, me and Roy actually, you know, our mobile book sucked. Okay. Huh? Okay. Whatever that was, disregard. Okay. So, we had a book for mobile device security, and the book was terrible. We found a better book. I'm not saying a great book, a better book, but it also included wireless. And it really included everything that the wireless book has, so we kind of combined them together. Okay? Uh, I think I put another. Okay, we'll cover wireless plus projects pertaining to mobile phones. Now, that's going to change again. Okay? Once the entire new degree program's up and running and everything, what's going to happen is going to cover wireless and the security of mobile phones, not really so much as the analysis of them. That will be done in the mobile forensics course. So it's it's going to change again. One more question. Um, we changed this to we changed the new degree plan. Yes. How much of our other old completed classes will actually convert? All of them. Since they've been well, there's so much new content in the classes. Will there not be any okay. conflict? Okay. Here's the way it always worked. If you've taken a course five years ago and the number is still the same, you still get credit for it. Okay. I know it sucks. Could be cut. Here, here's a prime example. Programming one years ago was was uh, uh, Pascal. That was Java or C plus plus. But it doesn't matter if you go to another school. They say you got programming one. So, back, way back when, when I first started teaching here, we actually had a network administration using Novell, a network administration using NT4. We actually had two different courses. You know, this, it was the same course, but this semester was Nobel, this semester was NT. Kept going back and forth. So we, you can really teach whatever. Okay. So, but, yeah, so this course is going to focus more on the wireless. At, think about it, everything's mobile now. It is. So it's going to be more on the security of that rather than the actual analysis of it. The, there will be some analysis devices, just not as much once the other course is up and running. Okay. Feel sorry for Permissions to do that. Um, is there any possibility we can get like a temporary forensics lab? We can currently use 211 and 214 for whatever we feel like. We can you can go in there and install whatever you feel like on those machines. You end case is already installed. Um, we're, we do we have um, paraben on those? Okay. That's right, we did it on the virtual machines. Okay. We have Paraben, we actually have Celebrite, which is outdated. We need to check and see if that still works. If you guys want to play with all of our stuff, I am totally fine with that. You can do whatever you feel like. Yeah, that's actually two rooms down or the one across the hall. Yeah, just find it. Go to his office, 208, and if there's not a class going on, you can play in there all day long. Do whatever you feel like. So long as there's not a class in yeah, as long as there's no class in there. That's you can also use 201 as long as there's no class in there. Those are all on a separate network, so you can't screw with the Rose network. So they're all... Yeah. Okay. Okay, Unix Linux. That course hasn't changed much over the years, with the exception of changing the version of what we're teaching in there. Take it with Bill Richards if you can. Mm -hmm. Anyone take it with Bill? Right here. So far, so good? Like yeah, Bill's amazing. Bill is, wow. Spend, nice. spend all the time programming. And my, my plan is to always have him teach. See, Bill used to teach for us. See, I met Bill back in the early 90s. He uh, flew on the AWACS. So I met him over at, at Tinker, and I remember surfing the Internet with him, literally when the Internet first came out. Like Mozilla point zero zero nine or something, and literally five minutes later we were done. We surfed the entire Internet. You know that Cox commercial, that Roadrunner commercial that years ago? So fast, I'm done. Well, literally, we were done. So I've known Bill for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, and he literally lives this stuff. I hosted his web server for years and years and years. And then he used to teach us. But then he got promoted to the like big wig at DISA where he didn't have the time anymore, so we stopped. Now he's retired. So now we're like, yay. Um, 
And the bad thing is Bill only has a bachelor's degree, which is actually all needed. The, the state regions specifically say you have to have one level of degree higher than what you're teaching. So think about it. We're teaching associate's level. What do you have to have? A bachelor's. So we want master's here, but we can live with bachelor's. Well, we have other people with masters that want to teach at Union Clinics. No, it's been nothing but a nightmare. So I went down to Jim Hester, and even the Dr. Hendricks says, no, Bill's teaching it. That's it. No one else, because he, he screw up. Now, if Bill leaves again, we'll get somebody else. But, I mean, you guys been in his class. Only he literally, that's him. That's his name is Unix. So he's, he's good. So uh, take it with him if you can. Um, he will allow you to take his class online. Just got to let him know. He actually records all his lectures now. It's funny because I think it was last semester, or maybe the semester before, I talked him into recording his lectures. He did not want to do that at all. But once you start doing it, it's like, wow, this is kind of cool. Because then he could tell the students, hey, go back to uh, week three, 18 minutes in, I walk you through it. And it solves so many problems. Like in forensics, so many students go back to those videos and pause and rewind and it solves me problems. So, what? Yes, he is. So he, he's really, really good. It's like okay. He's actually like has some sort of real world experience or yes. something. Like it's almost like I'm being learned to think. Yes. Whoa. Now he's covering Raspberry Pi in there and everything else. So. Well, some of yours help with other classes. If you go back and listen to them all, you yeah. can do other stuff. Yes, you can because uh, a lot of them overlap. Some of yours from previous years work too. Yeah. Yes. That's why I try. It's like, um, what was the. the um, Basically, some of the lectures work on this semester when I did the, like the recording for the forensics, the, the, the email tracking one, I covered specific things to make sure they had the answers. And they're like, oh, that's right, you did say that. Why do you think I say this stuff? I skipped a couple uh, of the, for operating systems because yeah. you weren't the one speaking. Oh, and Mojo? I, I couldn't stand I couldn't stand the person speaking. Well, Mojo was really good. I couldn't. But he, he, he was so good. If you don't know Mojo, his name is Eugene Majeski. I actually taught him way back when at Tinker. I was you know, teaching and he was a student of mine. But you know, he was in the military. He got out of the military. Then he came to teach here. And I didn't recognize him. So he came in to sit down. That's back when me and Eileen were off soon together in 131. So he was sitting over by Eileen's desk and... He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in becoming an adjunct. He's like, oh, do you have any experience? Do you know anybody? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I've had all these classes. Well, who was your teacher? Goes, your husband? And I'm like, what? Because all of a sudden he had, like, super long hair, biker jacket, was in a band, you know, it was the exact. I'm in the military, then I'm, like, the opposite of the military. Just imagine but, you're, like, not paying attention yeah. at all. You your last blood. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, really, really super nice guy, but now he's too busy with his job. So, you know, adjunct pay is decent, but it's not. Super awesome. Okay. He was a really great program teacher. Yes, he was. I had. Yes, he was. Of course, yes, he was. That, that whole, you know, trying to sleep in class, that was bad. Though. Yes. Okay, <laughs> let's continue on. Okay. Principal's course. I'm thinking today, going through this, we need to rename it. Because really, the whole information assurance is going away. Yeah. It's really becoming cybersecurity. Like, or, you know, it is. That's it. So I don't know how we're going to rename this one. I don't. Can we rename it the first course you should take? Yeah, well, that's starting to... <laughs> <laughs> right, starting to... Like Had a prerequisite, I'm removing it. If OSU is going to rename theirs for the information Yeah, well... So they're always freaking out late. We're making so many changes. It's like, whoa, when did you change this? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, right there. So... But, yeah, we need to... Changed. I don't know. <laughs> Call. <laughs> I, I want to make it better. See, I've been here... For exactly, this is 16 now, I've been here for 16 years now. Guess how much curriculum I've done in 16 years? 16 years worth? Today. That's really today. That's when I started. <laughs> Eileen did it all. Okay. Problem was it all wasn't done correctly. Hence the problem we hadn't agreed for the last five years, which I didn't even realize was a problem. But So, you know, we're, we're trying to fix and change a lot of things. And now since I'm really the only cyber person... I only have to ask myself. So as long as I approve it, we're there. That's why they sort of like, you know, you need to get with your discipline. Oh, I'm in charge of the discipline, and I'm also in charge of the cybersecurity program. So guess what? It's approved. So. What? Um, you know, 
If you ever want to come back through, of course you can. Um, but, you know, yeah. So, all right. So, principles is the, really the beginning course. It used to have a 100 number. I'm thinking about re renumbering it back to a 100 number. The reason it doesn't have a 100 number is because we made an agreement with Southwestern, somebody, Weatherford, or something, and they would accept all these courses, but that one course had to be a 200 level. Well, then not a single person has ever gone there. So it's like, you know, the problem with it being a 200 level is so many new people come here, I can't take that first. Well, actually, you should be taking it first. Because if you take this class first and you like it, at least partially, you're in the right place. If you take this class and you hate life, you're in the wrong place. So that's why it needs to be, so um, we're, we're thinking about that too. Thinking about a lot of things. I have. It doesn't count if you have me in there because I think that comes to generally. Okay, we ignore you. Uh, basically, I got three weeks to get all this done, in case you're wondering. So if you're wondering why some of my stuff is behind, it's because of this. Okay. Network security. Uh, this course has changed a little bit here and there. It currently has a prerequisite for network administration. I'm going to remove that. So, so you can get it without the prereq. Prereqs are okay in some areas, but they're not that important in some other areas. Okay. Okay, prepares you for the CompTIA Security Plus exam. Now, I said the gold standard. Well, this is now the gold standard. I actually asked that question the other day. Why does Tinker all of a sudden need Security Plus? Well, here's why. The security people on Tinker uh, basically all have to have a Security Plus. And, well, before they had to have that, the government said, we need to make everybody get a certification. And they looked at the A plus. Then they looked. At, they looked at tons of certifications. And they basically said, which certification, the most bang for our bucks in security. So they went with network security. So that's what, that was a recent change. I think August is when it took effect. So if you want to get a job at Tinker now, get your security plus exam done, and we can literally get you hired in moments. So Mark Jensen out there, who uh, see all most of the. Support work at Tinker is done by contractors. Not all, but most. Mark Jensen's a prior student of mine. So we got a direct line in. And I, I, I literally sent him Cameron's resume, and within an hour, he calls Cameron to set up an interview. Next morning, he was hired. So uh, Virginia was hired out there. We literally, she emailed her resume out there, and that day, we were actually heading to a cruise same day they call her and offer her a job no interview no nothing literally offer a job and they're like can you like sign your contract right now like day one like same day so we literally had to stop in houston at a friend's house to borrow their computer to print it out sign and send it back before we get on the cruise so we can get you hired pretty darn quick but you need your security plus now i don't know they might take part-time people, but I'm not sure. If you go to this Tulsa thing, you're going to be working for the DOD up in D.C. somewhere for the summer. The clearance takes two process. Well, it was, it was a different one he said. It was, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I recommend getting your Security Plus. Does that mean don't get your A Plus? No, because Dell still needs your A Plus. So it's not, it's not bad. Um, so I recommend get as many as you can. That can't hurt. Okay? Now, like I said last semester, um, if you really, really want to get this and really study for it and get prepared for it and really honestly can't afford it, come and see me and I'll pay for yours. Sir. No problem with that. But again, like I, you know, some of you don't know me, but I don't smoke. Okay? I've never smoked a day. Not even once. Literally, high school field trip, Everybody was in Boston smoking pot. I wouldn't. I was the only one on the whole trip that wouldn't. I just couldn't. But my point is, if you can smoke, you can afford this voucher. Cigarettes are what? Five bucks a pack? Going to go up to six fifty a pack? See, one pack a day, that's 150 bucks. Voucher's 148 There you go. Done. Free voucher every month. So, I mean, it's just telling you. I have a crippling Mountain Dew addiction? No. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had a grant in the past, which I actually funded myself, which actually paid for, you know, some tuition for students, and even paid for certifications. But after multiple students 
not realizing which scholarship they earned, had come to me complaining, and that was only 300 bucks. Literally. What the hell? What, what good is 300 bucks? I might as well turn the damn thing down. It was my scholarship they won. I'm like, oh, so you don't want 300 bucks. So I, after a couple times, I was you know, I'm done with this. I just, ungratefulness is just... I don't know about you. If I came in here right now and handed you 300 bucks, would you take it? Yes. No, I'm going to turn that down because it's crap. How many of you would say, what, it's not a 1000 Literally, that's what students were coming to me. I can't believe it's only 300 bucks. What the hell could it's 300 bucks? I'm like, that's an entire class. Back then, it was an entire class and book. Wait, hold on. Let me check exactly how much. Yes. So, but that's what happened to my scholarship. I still have one, but now it just oh, goes into the general scholarship fund because I, I can't. I'm sorry. Stupidity. Oh, this is crazy. Okay. So you said that the A plus gets you out of the class, network plus gets you out of the class. So does security class. So it gets you out of this class? Yes, it does. Okay. Now, I'm glad you brought that up. It gets you out of the class. It does not get you out of the hours. Let me explain what that means. CIT 2323 is network security. You get your certification, you no longer need the course. But you don't get hours for it. They waive the course. You still need to get the 63 hours. So then if you're planning to go on for your bachelor's degree, take a second humanities. Take a speech course. Take a science with a lab, which you're going to need anyway. And get the hours. So, I mean, if you, you know, when I went to get my first degree... I didn't look at my associates. I wanted to get this bachelor's degree, so I went straight for the bachelor's. Other degrees came along the way. But you know, if you guys are going out for your bachelor's, you should be saying, hey, you know, there's no classes I can take this semester, but I really want to take something, so what might I need for my bachelor's? Then take the humanities or the speech or the whatever. So yeah, test out of those three. Take two humanities and a little science with a lab. There you go. Hours are made up, and you're much better off. So, and you save money. Do you get to retake? <laughs> the answer to that question is we have actually let some people retake Scott Stokely's classes. <laughs> yes, we have. So. I was wondering. I was wondering. <coughs> okay. Okay. Let's continue on. Okay. Twenty-five. That's the wrong number. It's actually twenty. Sorry, it's two zero fifty-three. Twenty fifty-three is network administration. Sorry, I missed the number there. But 2053 is network administration. It's, you know, basics of networks. Now, this will prepare you for the Microsoft 4011 certification. I'm teaching this in the summer because the class currently sucks. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. When I came here in 1996 to teach, I mean, I literally, I ran networks, took care of, you know, St. Philip Neary School, the Cox Convention Center, Chesapeake Arena, uh, Philip Neary School, Aerospace Report, Dixie Air, Taylor Valve Tech. I took care of all these companies, all their networks. Literally, the Marriott, Cox Convention Center, I took care of their entire network for years. So I have a lot of experience in it. But I haven't done it in years because I've been doing cyber. And what happened to this class is it kind of it needs to be fixed. And now since network administration is required because of our CAE2Y certification, it needs to cover more than it's covering. So this summer, I'm planning on fixing it so it's covering what it needs to cover. So last summer, it didn't make. So this summer, y'all need to enroll. At least some of you said so nothing makes, so I had to fix it. Okay? So, all right. And it's required for the new degree anyway. If you want to get the new forensics option, you need this. So, what did you say now? I mean, Chris is does a decent job. I mean, the lab they use is actually decent. The problem is it needs to do more than just that. It needs to do more than just focus on 4011 is my point. Okay, if you walk through all that stuff in that book, I mean, I don't know how good he's teaching. He's probably not making recordings, is he? No, no. The only thing I know of so far is uh, uh, all of our labs are on the, the Noel Center and the Cox Microsoft site. Yeah. Well, I specifically sent him an email and said, you must do this. And I was even at a meeting, which he was sitting there, and the moment they divided us up into disciplines, he left. Yeah. I, I, I can understand that because the... Okay, his the wife... The OAC site keeps referring to uh, the, how you're supposed to acknowledge right. how you're doing the lab. You know, take a screenshot of this and put it into, right. the, into the document that your professor provides. It's not like you guys have provided us. Yeah. 
Well, he's basically just wanting us to take screenshots and put it in his work documents. His wife is well, the number one person in charge of admissions. Singles. So it's kind of... That's why I'm teaching it this summer, to fix it. And then we'll move on from there. He actually called me this semester, what brick were you using? I'm like, dude, you, teach the last, you taught last semester. I mean, what brick are you using? <laughs> I mean, you know, so that's when I realized I need to fix it. So, Okay. You know cyber law and ethics. Okay. A little history on this course. It was cyber law. It covered a lot of law aspects. And then we had an advisory committee, and they said, are you covering ethics in there? Well, we did a little, and then we got a new book. Now it's ethics. <laughs> so um, the book is now ethics with a little bit of cyber law. So I was actually talking to Arlene today about it. We actually went to the book. See, y'all think I do nothing all day. By the way, I went from 147 emails to 38. So a lot of you probably got responses and stuff in the last couple of days. Cause I've, see, I found if I wait long enough, your question is void. Like the question, hey, can I still enroll for sprint? No, too late now. Or, hey, can I? No, too late now. So, But this course, is we have, the book currently is the Ethics and Information Technology. So that's what the course is going to become. It's going to focus more on ethics. Tell you, everybody wants that. Because what's missing today, nothing against our high school senior here, but they ain't being taught crap, most of them. She's way above and beyond most. But we have a lot of kids who literally do the bare minimum, and ethics is none of them. You know there's only six states in the nation that require cursive writing now? Six? The entire United States. That's it. I learned cursive. Didn't most of you learn cursive writing? Not anymore. Did you learn cursive? Yeah. Uh, the whole alphabet. I mean, literally A to Z. I learned Okay. I lost that like a year ago. My stepkids, I think, got to E. That's where they stopped. They ran out of time. They moved on. It's like, what about the rest of the alphabet? <laughs> so you can you can write an A. We can't do many letters beyond that. But my point is, <laughs> okay. So the point is, ethics really needs to be taught because there's something that's lacking. Okay. This does. OSU does. Except this is a four thousand level ethics course. So yeah. So. Uh, I used to teach a course at, up at Park University called the Computers in Society. Same exact course. It was actually the first course I ever taught. And it was like, but, yeah, so, but that's what, so, so obviously a lot of these, you know, descriptions that are the ones registered with the course will be changing soon. I dislike this course because my professor got a lot of complaints about me. <laughs> it was probably Scott. No. Was I Eileen? Eileen, uh, Apparently there were six students a day after discussion who came in and complained to Eileen about me. Oh, jeez. I can see that. I, I probably think they were right, too. No. Okay. No, because you, she posed an ethical question, and I would prove ethically and morally things that aren't ethically and morally right technically are. Okay. You mispronounced, <laughs> you mispronounced Ram Law in about 30 people. Okay, so, it's so basically, like I said, the description was based really on cyber law only. It hasn't been rewritten. I said all this curriculum that somebody else was just amazing at hasn't been done. So I, we got to do all this now. So this change is more than ethics, you know, based on what our advisory committee has said to us. And now Devin, you know, I said I've gone out there multiple times, had lunch with them, and they tell me, here's what we need. We need ethics. We need Python. Literally, those are the two things that kept ethics and Python. So, yeah, think about it. You go work. Yeah. Okay, Josh Posey, some of you might know Josh. He actually works at IT over at First National. What if he had no ethics? He's working at the bank where my money is. It was your money. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So the point is ethics is important. So whether you believe it or not, you're going to get it. So that's where that course is going. Python, you're going to be able to take more money quickly, but with yes. ethics, then you'll be able to give that money to a needy cause. There it's you like do. It's like Robin Hood. Like sneakers. Okay. Um, all right. ISM 2523. In, excuse me. Information security management. That's what the thing says. It really says nothing, but that's what it says. It's really ISA and ESM combined. Okay. I mentioned last week. I looked at all those two courses plus SSAC, and it was only 16 projects, and the majority of them were duplicated. Mm -hmm. 
So what's happening is we're trying to focus, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not a policy loving person. So we're still going to have a policy course, but we're not going to have three policy courses. Yeah, just. So what's going to happen is SSA you see, will slowly disappear as well. It's not on the degree sheet, if you noticed. Okay. That's actually where the biggest problem came in today. So I went to do it, and I moved to SSA saying, crap, it's only 59 hours. That is not going to work. And then that started the big roll of problems. So that's what. ISM is. I'm currently teaching ISM this semester. Um, I don't know who will teach it next semester, but uh, it's going to incorporate more of the SSAC component as well in the near future. Okay. All right. Digital forensics currently has a lot of prerequisites. Okay. Let me explain the whole prerequisite part at the end there. Particularly, the OSBI background check and interview with faculty. Okay. Well, OSBI background check. It's a great idea, except there's a problem with it. It's a snapshot in time. If you just moved here, guess what? There's a blank. She's too young to have anything in hers. So, you know, and, and you know, I have a student in Florida. He can't even, how am I going to get an OSBI background check? I'm like, you're not. So we replaced it with a the ethics agreement a lot of you have already signed already. Yeah. Basically says, hey, you know what? You're an adult. Make the right choices. All right. The part about the interview with faculty, let me tell you where that came from. Way back when we first started this program, I had a student who uh, was in my class, and he came to me, and he goes, you know, I'm going to be up front with you because, you know, I work full time. He actually worked here on campus. He goes, I work full time, and I'm married. I'm assuming that's some of you in this room already. He goes, okay, I need to relax when I go home at night because, you know, I worked all day. Go to school at night. I mean, when I go home, I need to relax. He says, okay. And he goes, now weekends, that's the family time. That's when I spend time with my wife. So I'm like, you work all day, you go to school, you relax and sleep when you get home, and you spend time with your wife on the weekends. He goes, yes. So unless I can do my homework during class, I can't do it. I'm like, seriously? So my point is that's why I tell everybody it's a lot of work. If you're not ready to do a lot of work, don't do it. Okay. Do y'all agree it's a lot of work? But it's fun work, isn't it? Uh, a little bit. Cool. If you have a good enough Some computer, it. it's not that big work. Man, your digital physics is a lot. It's not the now. Part. You need to make it harder. I know. <laughs> Go ahead. I've already told you. Make it harder. Do it. But, hey, the, right. but the point is, you know, I might make you do a lot of stuff, and some of it might be tedious, and you want to hit your head against the wall, but you're learning. Carrie's a prime example. She used what we taught last semester and actually solved something in real life. So... But, and the prerequisite really just needs to be the beginning course. Okay? All right. It's also the bomb. Oh. <laughs> is that a bomb? Yes. It's the bomb. Okay. Is, is that the next? Yes. Are bombs the yeah. next? Uh... I'm just telling you. This course is the bomb. I don't want to put the word bomb on there because someone might think, you know, oh, no, there's a bomb. Call security. I was going to say, is that the next theme? Is that next semester's theme? Bombs? Yeah, no, I can't do that. Okay. You've done so, that before. So, yeah. <laughs> basically, this is also the introductory course for the new digital forensics option. Okay. Yeah, this course is going to cover, like, currently like our principal's course now, a chapter on cryptography, a chapter on network security, a chapter on forensics and all that. That's broken into other courses. Well, this digital forensics course was broken into other courses. We stopped taking pictures. <laughs> okay. Okay. The bomb making materials and the fuses and the yeah, yeah the fertilizer. Really, uh, I did not. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Now child pornography. We're probably not doing a project on that. <laughs> okay. So let's continue on. All right. Hey. Um, cryptography used to be called computer security. See, my computer security course. Is different from OSU's. Their computer security course, if they teach it, is basically the pen testing book hmm. with like no projects. So if you take their computer security with me, you get this course. If you take it with them, you get it, the pen testing. <coughs> it's, they don't complain about it. So. But did it still transfer? Yeah. Because they didn't take mine. They didn't take your computer security or cryptography? They didn't um. take it. They still will. He 
Well, I need to talk to Pam then. They probably just didn't get the the, the that's been renamed. Yeah. All right. This is the other bomb. It's another good course. This is probably <laughs> one of the toughest courses, along with forensics, teach everything from Caesar cipher all the way to AES encryption. It's not too hard. Question? No, it's not hard. Yeah. It, the email with the programs. Will, I get, will you get to that before the thirty first when it's due? Oh, it doesn't matter. I already have it before that. I looked by the dates when you said it. No, but I mean, I sent you an email about. I know, I got them. The program. Yes, I, I need it to, so I can do. Oh. Get the credit, the extra credit for the action, for the keyword. Well, I can still you. Well, I still have the program, so I can still give you credit. Is the, the new the cipher's not complete? I wanted your. I, I wanted to oh. know if it was if I was going. Okay. To As of an hour ago, I was already at forty-two hours. I'm working half the day tomorrow, but I'll try to look at it. So okay. I'm just darn busy. Okay. So basically, like she said, it's not a bad course. It's fun, but, you know, some people really freak out and have such a hard – it's not that hard. It's – but seriously, is the math of AES difficult? No. There's 8,000 steps, but it's easy. So, all right. All right. Yeah, 2603, security auditing, penetration testing. Uh, again, there's the course for that. Um, it's basically very similar to the Certified Ethical Hacker Certificate certification. Yeah. I haven't got that one yet. I need to go get that one of these days. I'm just that's, lazy. That's a hard yeah. certification because yeah, they test your actual abilities. They do? It's not just a paper test. Nice. You actually have to cipher and hmm. crack stuff minuscule. Like That'd be cool. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, that's what pen testing is all about there. Other certifications. Yes. You said there's a book required for that. Yes. I recommend the book because you, one of the tests is actually out of the book. So, um, and it would help you, especially on the part when about TCP IP and all that. It would help you understand the packet headers and all that. So, yeah, good, good question. Uh, I haven't been mentioning that, but not all books, not all courses require books. Let me go back real quick and cover which ones do, okay? Then we'll go in real quick. I can't read that fast. Not at the yet. Okay. Requires a book, but it's going to be free starting next semester. Requires a book. It's going to be free next semester. It's actually going to be part two of the same book plus some additional material. Okay. 1503 requires a book. Okay. Computer hardware requires a book as well. Okay. Mobile device security requires a book, but I can give it to you for free if you'd like it. I didn't say that. Shh. All right. Um. Unix Linux it requires a book as well, but now it's some really funky one, but it's supposed to be really good. So, All right, Principles requires a book as well. And then we get into the ones that, okay, Network Security requires a book too. Uh, network Administration, which is 2053, okay. currently requires a book. I don't knew, know for next semester. I haven't determined that yet. Summer? Well, yeah, for summer, I mean. Do these actually require the book, or do they require the book like they require the book now? Okay. You can get by without the book. We, we provide all the slides for all the courses. But, you know, it's really <laughs> not that deep. <detailed. laughs> the operating system slides were, had all the answers so in them, the literally all of them. Flipped, yeah. they, they were, I did not catch that. Yeah. That's the only thing I did. Yeah, you didn't catch that? No, I caught it. He's the one who kind of talked me into doing it, I think, didn't he? I was looking for missing yeah. dinosaurs. I didn't catch the dinosaurs. I think cryptography first. There was something different. Yeah. Why is there a code in there? Yeah. Okay. It's different what's wrong. So 2053, for now, it's required. I cannot guarantee that in the summer. Cyber law and ethics, that's required. Um, the slides are detailed, but I don't know what the exam is at the moment, so I can't tell you if it's enough to pass. ISM, you can get by without the book in that one. It, the book would be helpful, but you can get by without it. Okay, digital friends, don't get the book. Unless yeah. somebody else is paying for it. Uh. If somebody else is paying for it, buy it. You're not going to read it anyway, but you can get it. Okay. Cryptography, don't buy the thick book. Buy the crypto book and read it. Because you're going to get bonus questions on the test. And, has anyone actually read that book yet in here? What, crypto? The whole book? Not the whole book. Read? Most of the way through. Most of the way It's good, isn't it? It's a really good book. She's Anyone like the first three like pages. <laughs> you only read the last, last pages. Right. What now? The last pages. Oh, you're at the end? No, but somebody in our class did. 
Yeah. They only read the ending? And they got that extra question on the quiz. Nice. Oh my God, it's cool. No, 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 he doesn't. Next right, semester, it's story. You learn how all this stuff happened and, and how it got to where it's at today, and it's it's really, really interesting. So read the crypto book. Cost you five bucks, okay? And I think I even give it to you for free, don't I? I I didn't give it to you for free. It appeared there. I don't know where it came from. Now there's also a book in there about the Enigma. I am a third of the way through that book. Okay, if you watch the movie Imitation Game, it's an amazing movie. It's based on the book, The Imitation Game, but the book is like 8,000 times more in depth. Yeah. I'm a third of the way through the book, and he's still in school. Okay? I mean, what was he in school for five minutes in the movie? So, There's you know, a lot of drama in the movie that I don't really think yeah. he would be the past well. time. Well, he was a homosexual. They had to point that out. They had yes, to. Uh, we, yeah, they didn't have to get, keep pointing it out for the entire movie. Well, it's pointed out a lot in the book, put it that way. Well, fair enough. But. Okay. So, cryptography, again, don't buy the thick book. Now, the thick book is good because it, if you have more questions on the stuff, everything I cover is in there in a great gory detail. Oh, my God, gory detail. So, if somebody's paying for your book, buy it. Or you just have extra money, buy it. You don't necessarily have to have it. Now, if you ever want to borrow my copy of a book, I'm fine with that. Just make sure I get it back, because I have all these books. So, All right, uh, same with this, this one here. Okay, we already talked about that one. Uh, so, other certifications. CISSP is kind of like the best one there is. Okay? If you complete our entire degree program and understood our entire degree program, you can get this. But you can become the CISSA, whatever, the associate. Which means you pass the test, you don't have the experience, and once you get the experience, you can get the certification. There's different levels of experience, too. Right. You have to have, like, there's levels. Like, you right. have to be... So many in this is, area, so many in this area. So right. you can pick two. So if you have IT experience... It works. It works. Now, uh, you have to, you can't just go take the test. You have to be recommended by a CISSP. So I have one, so I can recommend you. I've recommended a couple students in the past, like Tim Meyer and a couple others. So if you want to get yours... And you're ready for it, let me know. I do recommend taking a boot camp class. What the boot camp class is, your entire degree program in one week. Uh, but it's good because it refreshes your brain. So Now, speaking of that, over the years, we've been asked multiple times about offering a boot camp class on the CISSP. If we did that, would anyone be interested in it? Okay. It would cost money. You still interested in it? Are we talking like three thousand? Oh no 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 no. That's what the other one. See, way when I first got hired here, here's what I did. When I first got hired here, what I would do was I would hold all these boot camps for all the different certifications on. That would be like a Friday night and a Saturday all day, and I had a really high rate of people passing them. But you know, I just see when I first got hired here, I had to work nights and weekends because I was. 7 to 4 in the military, and then 5 to 10 in weekends here, so I was doing a lot of, you know, Friday night and Saturday boot camps, and was working out great, everybody loved it, but, you know, I can't give up all my life. Do your boot camps include the test? Well, we haven't even looked at, no, if it does include it, I mean, that's a $600 test, so I mean, yeah, you can't pay for that. Say, that's what so, so, so it won't include that. I mean, it's a $600 yeah. test. Yeah. What? I thought it cost more. It, it shouldn't, I don't it's think. It's a $100 application fee. Yeah. Most of them have that. But isn't a 600-hour test total? Yeah. total? Okay, yeah. yeah. So, you now, <laughs> once all the curriculum action's done, and if some of you feel like you would like that, let me know, and I can see what we can put together. CCFP is through the same people, through ISC Squared. It's in forensics. That's the one I'm going for in April, April 18th. They're sending me to Dallas to get that one. So... It's costing $3,389. No, no, I'm sorry. $3,895. But it includes the, cert, the vouchers and a free retake if I fail. Which I really hate but when you they get do the that. Training too. Exactly. If you just take the cert, it's way cheaper. I hate when they give free retakes. and what that means? It's People hard. don't try. I mean, oh, I can just see what it is first. No. I'm going to pass the first time. But yeah. CCFP. Oh, I don't remember ex exactly what it stands for. It's forensic professional. Somebody, some okay. 
ENC, NK Certified Examiner. We actually have students who have gotten that one. If you play around with NKs, you can pass that. Yes? So is it better to get that one or the more general one? The CISSP is the best one right now. Okay. If you were going to be working in the field, CCFP, but you know, that's a brand new one. Dr. Schnoy was actually on the committee that wrote the exam. So he actually wrote part of it. So, <laughs> so I, I don't know. I haven't seen the test. So, but I will be taking it April 23rd, I think, something like that. So. No, actually, they, they give me a voucher for the CCFE, and I take the test while I'm there. Then they give me a voucher for a CCFP, where I take after the fact. I think it's Forensic Examiner, Forensic Professional. There's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, I'm getting that one, too. I just haven't scheduled that one yet. Okay. So the end case one requires you to take a course through guidance software, two of them actually, but you can waive one of them if you have some experience. Taking my course, that waives your experience. Certified computer so, physics examiner. Or professional. Or professional. Okay. Or professional. So, NCASE is a good one to get. ACE is Access Data Certified Examiner. I thought that one was easier. That's uh, FTK. So, uh, and I'm also getting this one in April. The CREA, Certified Reverse Engineer Analyst. So the CCFP, is that going to cover, uh, like, any sort of the proprietary software that you're going to run into in the field, like in case? I doubt it. Uh, I think that's what I was wondering. Yeah, I doubt it will. And you know, my point is I've always believed that if I'm teaching a class, I should be at least know what the hell I'm doing or have the certification in it or something. <laughs> so hence I'm getting this. So. Like, like GUB and all. Yeah, well, you know, it's true. So. They have books if you go to Amazon. Oh, yeah, there's lots They've of them. They've got the official study guide. Or you can go to Barnes and Noble and just Royal sit Steel. and read theirs. <laughs> okay, so those are some so other certifications I recommend you think about getting. Um, yeah, so, all right. So, all right. Any other questions? I think I, and that's the hoodie I refer to in the email. I need to pitch in and buy them a new one. That's yes. The C. The CEH. Yes. Uh, class. Are you using the actual book from? No, I'm not. You? I'm not using C. A. We're actually thinking about switching to it. Because I was going to say, as a, because you had mentioned U M U C, they actually use the network security uses the first three books, I think, and then their digital forensics uses the actual the actual the other three books. Okay. Yeah, we're not using it currently. I'm thinking about it. Problem is, those get darn expensive. Uh, certified ethical hacker official, whatever guide, and you know it. Yeah. So. So yeah, we're not using it, but that's something we need to look into as well. So. Yes, sir. So. Um, I don't know. The, the testing center. The, or we have the testing center here for all that stuff. Yes. Um, that. The tests would be here, it like really depends. I know they would handle the, um, uh, like the uh, CEH, CompTIAs, all those. I don't think they do CISSP. Now, they're all switching. Yeah, I think CISSP is too high level. They See, there, a lot of them are switching. Even in case now, you can do it online. When I did it, what? I actually had to do the test there, and they actually mailed me a case, and I had to put it in an envelope and mail it back. It's all done electronic now. You can do it online? Yeah. I mean, you go and download something from them, you have to two months to analyze it, then you upload it to them. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the case. No, no. But then case, you pass this 180-question test. It was funny. I was sitting there in a training class, and I went to a, basically a prep class for the test. And they were talking about binary and hex and all that. That's not a biggie. I do that stuff all the time. But there was people, this guy says, I don't understand. What is this hex thing? He had no clue. In binary, oh. literally no clue about I don't even know if he passed. No. But yeah, you have to pass the 180 question test. Is that online? I don't know if that's on. It probably. I don't know. But I passed it, and then the, I know the case is now online. You no longer have to have them mail you something and mail it back. So it's two parts? Yes. And you get two months for the hands on part and with a guaranteed 30-day extension if you need it. I mean, I was like... That's for the case study? Right. 
I was done all the way to the very end. Had it all. I just hadn't finished my report, so I asked for the extension, then submitted it like day one into the extension. And what sucked was you can ask him two questions, which I asked. Then I ask another question. Did I pass? We can't tell you that. But it was, you know, they, they're very strict on what they can answer for you. But at least they give you some. How long did it take you to do the second part? Actual hours, probably no more than 10, maybe 20 hours. So it wasn't very hard? No. Well, they tell you exactly. You know, like, yeah, they gave me a flash drive. You know, and was this flash drive in the machine? That's it. And you can answer it any way you want. You can literally say yes or no. But you don't want to. You really want to give them all the details. So when I answer, I'm a test to change now. But when I did it, I mean, literally, the links and everything were there. Everything was perfectly lined up. Except the serial number of the flash drive was not in the registry of the computer. So the way I answered was, here's all the evidence I found showing that it was potentially in the computer. But this one specific piece was missing, so I think it was all faked, and it was never installed on the computer. And you passed? I passed, yeah. So. But it's not just that one question. It's actually quite a bit of questions. But there's like ten questions like that. And you got to, yeah, they are. They're, they're tricky. Kind of like, that's where I get my stuff from. So, but, uh, and I think, actually, I'm using one of the questions similar to that. I don't know. But... So, uh, any other questions on that Literally, train? But in case, I mean, play around with it. It's not that hard of a certification to get. And it looks good. It looks really good. I'm going to the in case conference in Vegas in May. I mean, you can go if you want. You can pay for it. But it's like, I think it's seven ninety five plus hotel. Hotel is 120 a day, something like that. So. There you go. That's the Caesars Palace. I hate that hotel. I've been there so many times. I can't stand it. All right. Any other questions for me? Everybody happy? I know I, I, I wanted to cover something different today, but I kind of needed to get all this stuff fixed and go over, and I didn't have a chance to put anything else together. And I'm glad I did because it made me get all that other stuff fixed, which was good. Which was a nightmare. So. All right. If you have no question, I think that's the last slide. Yeah. Last question. 